Yo! So this is our fifth day in Kyoto and the cherry blossoms are continuing to bloom. This morning we had a small breakfast in our Airbnb which consisted of uh, Ichiran instant ramen, the uh, Ohio pudding and also a salad that we bought from the Fresco's grocery store nearby. And uh, the one of the great things about the Airbnbs is you can kind of set up your own convenience store meals with the uh, dishware that's provided in the Airbnb to make it more appetizing. And uh, also the other thing that's great about the Airbnbs is the big four room showers. And so uh, we are very much enjoying our experience in the Airbnb so far. And once again, uh, I think maybe another two days for the cherry blossoms to be in full bloom. Today we're going to be heading towards Fushimi in Nari Shrine. It's the one with the red gates that everybody goes to. And then later we're also going to be going to a Kabuki theater and watching a show there. We arrived at Fushimi Inari at around 8.45 in the morning on a weekday and it was a little bit crowded at near the entrance and the first maybe 300 meters of the shrine or the stairs but if you are looking to get an opportunity to take a picture with the red gates if you go up a little bit higher there's a lot less people and better opportunities to take a picture with the red gates and nobody behind you. The uh, Fushimi Inari area is essentially a hike up the hill covered by the red gates. It's a very pleasant and peaceful hike. Uh, it's a little bit strenuous if you're not used to climbing a bunch of stairs but overall we really enjoyed it. I think it was more uh, it was better than what we were expecting. We were just expecting it to be like mostly gates and a lot of people, but actually it gets a lot less touristy as you go up. We left halfway through the Kabuki Theater show at the Minamiza Theater. Uh, we did enjoy the show, the, f the half of the show that we were there. However, it was mostly talking a lot of talking and a lot of Japanese that we did not understand um, and so you know it was kind of sleep inducing a little bit for us and we did enjoy the show like we don't regret watching the show we don't regret like buying some tickets for the show the tickets were about forty dollars per person and we were sitting on the third floor and in the middle the view was very good um, However, I think our main mistake was that we didn't read the description about the story before we watched the show. And so we really didn't understand much about uh, what was going on. Um, so I think if we were ever to watch another Japanese show, we would uh, maybe read something about the show first, like a synopsis or a description before we uh, uh, you know before we go and watch the show so that was it for our kabuki theater experience and then we went to get some dessert we got some strawberry ice cream with some dango and red bean uh, it was very cheap it was only like three dollars and eighty cents for the whole plate and we really enjoyed it um, we were surprised how cheap it is so now we are going to our second Michelin star dinner. It's also a Michelin star kaiseki. This is Tozente. Um, it's in a different area than the Nakazen restaurant. So it'll be interesting to, com to compare the two restaurants to see which one we prefer. Our second kaiseki of the trip is completed. It's the one Michelin star Tozente and it is a family-run Michelin star restaurant. It's the Wantanabe family. The son is the person who's doing most of the cooking and his dad and his mom are next to him uh, helping out. So this restaurant is very similar in the cooking style to Nakazen which we visited two days ago. 
So we have a very clear memory about um, the similar kinds of ingredients and cooking style between the two restaurants. And so uh, Tozente, the food for us was overall very, very good. And uh, Claire and I have some a little bit of a disagreement in terms of which restaurant is better, Nakazen or Tozente. Uh, however, I don't, you know, it's not something that is really a big deal because both restaurants were very special experiences um, in terms of the service, in terms of the cuisine, and we don't really feel like either one is you know that much better than the other it's just a matter of uh, differences in experience and um, overall feeling and so the experience that we had with this Tozente restaurant was quite amazing I mean we were the only customers in the restaurant and so basically we felt like we were sitting there at, and then the Wantanabe family was personally cooking for us and telling us about the ingredients and really trying to help us out with their limited English. So th there's no comparison between that kind of experience and any other experience that you can get uh, from a dining perspective anywhere in the world. Like we don't, we've never had a family stand there and like cook for us personally with us being the only person in the restaurant and basically this is their house and so we have to say that uh, I mean th the food was very good everything was very good their specialty is the amadai fish along with the umeboshi uh, pl uh, pickled plum and that dish was very delicious every time I ate the omebushi ome, uh, umeboshi um, you know I had a smile on my face so overall we really enjoyed that um, restaurant experience and we hope to when we visit Kyoto we would probably go to either Nakazen or Tozente again uh, because of the experiences that they provided so that concludes our fifth day in Kyoto or fourth day in Kyoto um, hope you enjoyed watching us